All right, now on the last few uh, videos on the playlist, we set up some uh, skeletal animations for our 2D character for the quick start version of the games before we start. That way we have a, something to refer to uh, that we did ourselves when we start putting the actual objects together we're going to use. So now let's continue this with the 3D model. Um, I guess just a couple animations will work, just an idle animation, something to do when he's standing still. Uh, I'm thinking just some basic breathing. I look like the character's breathing and then an animation for walking. And a lot of the, uh, that was spread out amongst five videos. So there was a lot of details covered there on the 2D one, which also apply to the 3D because we're just uh, adding a skeleton animation in a, three dimensions instead of two. So, but I still want to go over this quickly. So when we, as we're ready to add a skeleton here, well, um, with the 2D one, we were able to just look straight on the whole time, but with three dimensions, it's helpful to have a second viewport open. So if you bring your mouse over here where it turns into a little crosshair. So this little empty spot between the, w the windows, which, um, yeah, the, this thing covered with buttons. It's also kind of buttons in between stuff, too. If we click there and start dragging over, you'll see the symbol, too. You'll see it, this symbol, and that will create a... There we go. Click over, drag over and down, and that will create a second window here in our viewport. Then we can just bring it over and set one of them to the front view which front is negative y and another one to one of the sides so like x i will look from the front and the side to work on this and if we want the other side we can just click on this x and it'll toggle back and forth between them it's kind of the quickest way to do that so zoom in so you can see both of them really good That'll work. I'll get started. So now we're ready to start adding bones. And to do that, just come up to the Add menu here in Object Mode. Here in Object Mode, come up to the Add menu. I guess I'll show this since both of these are linked together. If we switch to Edit Mode, it you'll see it changes together. So in Object Mode, come to Add and Armature. And there is a Blender plugin called Rigify. If you go to Edit, and preferences you can turn on uh, plugins and you can look for one called rigify which will add the human and some animal shapes um, which uh, let me move this over to the side a little if you want to use that but you can see that's very complicated and I wanted to go ahead and so in a preview, there's a lot of bones there, all the fingers, and in particular, all the face stuff. So we're going to do a much simpler version, but uh, you kind of get an idea of how long it would, when we get to the uh, weight painting, assigning um, kind of uh, how much each movement of the bone applies to an area of skin. You can see that something like that face would take a very long time, but you get a you get a lot of detail. But we're going to do a simpler version. I just wanted to point that out and let you know it's there. If you go to Edit Preferences and search for Rigify, uh, our, the Rigify, that'll bring in those other packages. Uh, but otherwise, you should ha at least have Go to add an armature and a single bone, which adds it right at the origin. Let me get that back in frame. There we go. Something like that. Uh, so now we can start ad adding bones the same way we did last time. I'm going to start with the lower back bone. But we probably want to see it the whole time. So with the bone selected, over here, you should have a menu button looks like a little stick man. So that's our uh, the stuff about the armature. 
if you come down to viewport display you can put it set it to always in front or you know if you want you can change the way the bone looks look at just little lines or see different envelopes i'm just going to look at the default uh, yeah octahedral uh, but probably want to see it so make sure you check in front so now we can go in edit mode with the bone selected go to edit mode and we can extend that to add the rest of the skeleton. And I'm going to do a simple animation here. So there's going to be a lot of bones. This first one, I just want to come up, cover most of the back up to about the shoulder blades. So I'm going to hit S to scale it. Oh, make sure it's selected. Uh, uh, the move tool will work. Hit S to scale it. Whoops. I was I had the wrong thing selected. Remember, we can select all three parts of the bones, the whole bone, the head, and the tail of it. So we'll make sure the whole bone's selected, and then hit S and scale it down to about the size you need. Uh, that looks like it'll go from the hips to the, and I'm gonna set the first one from the upper pelvis up to the shoulder blades. And then I'll just grab that, drag that in place, over on the other window, it looks like it's still centered. That worked. So now I'll extrude another one from the shoulder blades up to the base of the neck. E to extrude, get one for the neck. E and extrude one for the head. The head. So all the entire head will just kind of nod and turn based off that one bone, and not do all the face stuff. Just a quick example here. Uh, so that gets. The backbone up through the neck and the head. So I'm going to come back to this one right where the neck starts and I'm going to extrude uh, a shoulder, E to extrude an upper arm, E to extrude a forearm, and E to extrude a hand. Just some quick ones for each uh, for basic movement here. I'm going to grab each one of these over in the other view and move them over to. Where it looks like the right spot. It's kind of hard to see there. So you might have to turn it around and do little adjustments to till it looks like it's all the way in the arm there. Probably bring this back just a little. There we go. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other arm. Go back to the base of the neck, hit E, get a shoulder in there, an upper arm, a lower arm, and a hand. And then looking right from the side didn't seem very helpful. I'm trying to find a good angle where I can, where the other ones aren't getting in the way, so there's. And then just adjust these ends one at a time until they seem like they're about the right place. There we go. So that'll get our upper body. And now for our lower body, what I like to do is extrude one bone uh, for the pelvis. And whenever I'm animating it, that's the that's the one that will not move. So I called the, um, I guess the backbone, the base, everything's sort of a child of that backbone. But I always like to make the pelvis the thing that's not going to move. Then I'll come over and hit E to extrude a little bit over to the leg. And really, I guess all three of those are not going to move. Then come down to about the knee. Extrude, come down to about the ankle. And extrude another one for the foot. And then same thing, just kind of select the little nodes and put it in. A position where it looks like it'd be at the right spot to control the skin of the foot. Bring that down. That looks like it's above the the knee. So bring that down. That looks like a knee. And same thing on the other side. So E to extrude. And then these three bones, which are kind of like the pelvis, I never touch those in animation. So that's the stationary part, even though the parent bone is one that will move. Um, that's just something I've found 
that uh, I like to do. Um, it does take a little bit of time and practice with this to kind of get used to it. So just take your time, get some bones that you've a few bones in there that you think will be very useful for uh, linking the skin of a particular area of the character to. That looks good. So that gets our bone structure in. Uh, so as I spin around, well, I'm going to go ahead and close one of these. So if you bring your mouse to the middle, and right click in join areas and close one of them. And that gives us a little more room to look at the character, spin it around, make sure things look like they're in the right spot. At this point, just make sure the bones seem to be in the right spot connected to that skin. Because those knees could come forward just a little. Kneecaps do kind of protrude, protrude out. And make little adjustments. Till it, till you feel like it's that looks like the right spot to link the skin of your character to its skeleton. And once we do that, select we want to parent it. So select. Oh, we'll go back to object mode. Probably a good time to save. Hit Control S to save. And to parent things, we select the child and then the parent. So click on the skin. Then hold shift and then the bones and push control P to parent it. And this time parent with automatic weights. It does much automatic weight weights do much better in 3D than 2D. And the weights are kind of how it uh, how much each area of skin is affected by a particular bone. So now our human is in there and if we need to unparent it you can push alt well um whoops uh, apparently alt p pauses my screen recorder but if you push alt p you'll get a little button that says uh, unparent uh to uh bring that back out or if it uh if something didn't follow work right you can uh use undo quickly but yeah i apparently can't push alt P uh, to unparent file recording. So now if we select the bones, the armature, and go to pose mode, we should be able to select some bones, push R, and rotate, and see if they're working. Yep, looks like the skin's following right along with it. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and check all of the weighting and make sure the right bits of skin are being moved by uh, the right bits of skin are being moved by the correct bone. See you in the next video for that.